Welcome to Marmaris on the south coast of Turkey and welcome on board Larimar, a beautiful 24 meter gentleman's yacht built by Yener Yacht and designed by Taka Yacht Design. I'm really excited to show you through because I've learned some fascinating details about the way that the yacht was built. But first, a quick word about the designer because Taka Yacht Design have produced some beautiful modern looking yachts, but they're more better known for their classic yacht design. If you're a yacht enthusiast and you've ever seen the old yacht of Johnny Depp, which he rather cleverly called Vajoli Roja, that was a Taka yacht design. And this is a great example of one of their smaller yacht designs. We'll start by looking through the interior. And as you can see, the main lounge is predominantly mahogany, which is a suitable wood for this kind of yacht. It's very simple design with just a few elegant features such as this fluting uh, that's along here that you see repeated throughout the yacht. Some of it is high gloss, some of it's a satin finish. It works very well together. But one of the things that we always look out for when we're filming a yacht is the lighting. If you're a keen enthusiast yourself for photography and videography, you'll know how important lighting is. And we found that apart from these large windows in the side of the main lounge, allowing a lot of light in, take a look at what's above us. This prism here is something that you'd usually find on sailing yachts and it allows light to gush into this area. But also with these beautiful handles here, it actually opens up and you can allow fresh air to flow through the yacht. And as a matter of fact, as we look through, it seems to me that the owner quite possibly did want a good airflow throughout, as you'll see as we look into other areas. To the galley, I've got to say that this is one of the largest galleys I have ever seen on a 24 meter yacht. It's very simple, very clean, very elegant. These work surfaces must be super easy to keep clean and hygienic. Just behind me, you can see there's a sunlight coming through here because that's a side entrance from the side deck, and this is effectively a little pantry area with these ventilated doors allowing you to have dry storage in there to keep your glassware, your chinaware. All of the appliances in this area are very high end. All of them are melee from the five ring hob to the oven, to this huge fridge freezer and the second fridge through there. So this must be a wonderful area to be able to cook, entertain your guests as you're cooking here. You can have guests over there chatting to you. And if you're wondering what this lid is here, that's entrance to the crew quarters. We'll be looking all of the crew areas a little bit later on. But first, let me show you the guest accommodation. For a change i'm going to start with the owner's stateroom and rather unusually this has two single beds in it i love this detail here this roll end to each of the beds again with this fluting throat it's very elegant very simple as you move further forward we have a little changing area here with a couple of cabinets where you could sit and, and work on your laptop or this actually lifts up as well Nice area to keep your silk handkerchiefs before you go out. We have good wardrobe space to either side. And something I noticed actually as I went through the yacht, um, you can see that to open these wardrobes, you have this little hole here, and there's very simply a latch on the other side so that you can open up the door. I mention that because a lot of motor yachts don't have this. A lot of the design features on Larima were really based on sailing yachts. As you know, sailing yachts, of course, uh, uh, healing over a lot more than a motor yacht would. And so it's really important that the doors stay closed at all times. And so you usually do have latches like that on a sailing yacht, but not so much a motor yacht. And I've been on yachts where the sea's not even been that rough and doors are opening all over the place. That won't happen on Ledrimar. 
Now we're moving right into the bow of the yacht. So that's why we have that step up there and it starts to get a little bit more narrow here, but that doesn't matter because you have plenty of space for the toilet, this stainless steel sink, a well-sized mirror, and then look at the head height in the shower. This is a really good shower room. And not only do you have this fixed shower head here, but also you have a handheld shower uh, to the side and a little bench to sit on as well, should you desire to do so. Let's move on from the owner's stateroom to see how your guests are looked after. And on the port side, we have this twin cabin. I was talking earlier about the importance of airflow, and this is a great example. The portholes do actually open up so that if you're an anchor and maybe when you go to sleep, you like to have fresh air and you can just open those portholes up. But it doesn't end there because if you notice, there's this little feature here in the door and you might wonder what that is. Well, there's actually just um, something on the other side that you can turn to even let fresh air in and a proper airflow throughout. You know, that might sound ridiculous to you, but to a lot of yacht owners, fresh air is really important. I remember being involved with the sale of a really large yacht in excess of 10 million euro. And the owner was insistent on being able to have fresh air into his cabin. So we made all kinds of modifications to allow that to happen. Uh, here, it's already been thought of. Now, each of the doors, again, have the same latch system. So that, you can hear it, clicks into position and then clicks out. And then I'll let you through here, Slava, so you can take a look at the bathroom here too. The guest head is well appointed, again, with a good sized shower in there, off to the one side. Over onto the starboard side. We have the same setup again, again with opening portholes. I draw your attention to these. These are called storm shutters, and they're basically designed to be able to be really bolted tight shut so that you're out at sea in heavy seas, maybe a little bit further offshore than you normally would go. That's an extra security feature that a lot of very large yachts have, and it really is uh, an important thing to have on board a yacht like this, which potentially you could use to cruise pretty much throughout the world. Again, we have good hanging locker space. Again, we have the, uh, the head. There's an ensuite bathroom uh, to this area. And again, with a good sized shower. Let's take a look at the deck space and see what you get. access the, the sun deck from the bridge, but I want to show you the bridge a little bit later, so that's why I've come through here and we'll go up these uh, ladders. Well, what a beautiful sun deck this really is. Really well thought out from the aft end where you have this 4.2 meter tender with a dedicated davit to it. You can see here the prism that I spoke about earlier, allowing all the sunlight in to the uh, main lounge. If you want to be in the sunshine, you can use these areas here, which is pretty much out of the shade. If you want to be in the shade, which is my delicate English skin I always prefer, you can enjoy this area here with a, with a coffee table for snacks and drinks. The funnel is not a, a functioning funnel in the traditional sense of the word. It is functional because it's actually used for storage. Um, you have these lockers here, which are, as you can see, big enough to keep water skis and fishing rods in as well and also another storage area here, which at the moment is being used for some of the covers for the cushions on the sun deck. You can never have too much storage uh, on a yacht, even of this size. You have plenty of seating areas. You have the helm station here. Of course, 
we now have the aft deck, which is such a beautiful area on this yacht. I can imagine the owners will spend most of their time here, whether it's sitting here having something to eat at the table, which by the way, as you can see, is an extending table, or curling up in a ball there and just watching the world go by. It's a lovely shaded area to enjoy the yacht on. I want to show you though here, just a few technical details, starting with the helm wheel. Now this is a nice aesthetic feature to have on the yacht, but also it's an emergency steering uh, station because this is actually connected directly to the rudder stock. But if you come around here, you'll notice as well, that this is where the shore power is connected to the yacht. When you're in the dock, you can connect directly to the uh, ground electricity supply. And we have both a 380 volt and a 220 volt connection here. Now that's important to mention because different docks sometimes have different electrical supplies and to have that versatility is actually really quite important. Most of the yacht or all of the yacht actually runs on 220 volts so there's a converter from 380. Good to know that if you're looking at buying the yacht that's what the shore power system is. And the final little technical detail that I want to show you here is this stainless steel davit which is connected to the side boarding ladder on the side. Both of the side decks have these opening doors. The port side also has the side boarding ladder, which is great if you have guests coming here with a tender. That said, let's take a look at the crew quarters and the crew areas on this yacht. start the tour of the crew area in the bridge and what an impressive bridge it is too with a, a view so close to the bow this must be a wonderful position to cruise along uh, on the yacht from. You have a little seating area here for, for the captain or for the crew or even the owner if he wants to come up here and see what's going on. Lovely big helm wheel here. I'm surprised sometimes at some very large yachts that have a tiny little helm wheel or even no helm wheel at all. This is what you want to see on your yacht. As far as the instrumentation goes, it's really quite simple. This screen here in the middle has four different functions. It's a depth sounder, it's the plotter, it does your closed circuit television as well. And of course it does a radar. I want to bring your attention to these units here where it's written Sea Keeper, meaning of course that this has Sea Keeper zero speed stabilizers. She might look like a classic yacht, but she certainly has all of the modern conveniences. From here, let's take a look where the crew accommodation is. And to do that, we go back through the galley, through the hatch. So down here, we have two crew cabins, each one with their own ensuite head as well. The yacht actually can accommodate three crew. And I think you really need a crew of three if you're gonna do some extensive cruising. You'd need certainly the captain, of course, and the deckhand, probably with a little bit of engineering and nous about him too, uh, and a stewardess too. So there's a third cabin in the aft lazarette after the engine room, that's air conditioning, there's a washing machine there as well. It's a well-equipped area. The interesting thing that I know everybody wants to look at though, is through here. where we have the two Scania 300 horsepower engines. Now this yacht can cruise at 11 knots. It has a top speed of 13. At cruising speed, she'll burn just 80 liters of fuel an hour, which is actually a very, very economic uh, consumption for a 24 meter yacht. You can also see down there, we have the Seakeeper zero speed stabilizers, beautiful engineering, beautifully laid out, two 17 and a half kilowatt generators, what more? Could you want? At the beginning of the video, I told you that there's some really interesting technical details about the way that this yacht was built. I wanted to share with you. Larimar was built using cold molding. You think of the word 
mould, and you think of maybe a jelly mould uh, that a jelly pops out of. And actually, that's the way that a lot of composite fiberglass boats are built. They make a mould, and the hull pops out of the mould. With this shot, the use of the word mould refers to the way that you mould a piece of clay. Let me explain. The yacht starts with a keel, which is made of wood. Epoxy resin is applied to that wood, and another piece is put on top. More epoxy resin is added, and another piece put on top until you have a really solid, robust keel. From that, these ribs, called stringers, are attached to it until you get the skeleton of a yacht. Again, each one of these stringers is made with a piece of wood, epoxy resin, more wood, more resin, until you get a really robust skeleton of the yacht. Then, more pieces of wood are added, stapled to these ribs, one after another, at all different angles, 45 degrees, horizontally, vertically, until you build up this incredibly strong structure which makes up the hull. They were explaining to me that the reason that the pieces of wood are put at different angles is because, of course, the yacht is moving at different angles all the time, so you don't know where the stresses are going to be coming from. So by building it that way, you have an incredibly robust uh, yacht. The final layer, of course, is all put horizontally to give that beautiful uniform finish, and then the hull is painted. Let me tell you about the paint, because it's an unusual colour for this yacht, and it's an unusual name. La Rima is actually a very rare and very precious stone that's found only in a remote mountain range in the Dominican Republic. Reportedly, it was found by a missionary who was searching for gold. I'm quite sure that's not what missionaries are supposed to do. But in any case, he found this incredible jewel called Larimar that's exactly the same color as the color of the hull on this yacht. Apparently, Larimar gems are supposed to have healing properties, therapeutic properties as far as your spirituality, your emotions, and your physique is concerned. I don't know about that, but I do know that this yacht makes me feel very relaxed, and it's a great therapy to have been able to film it. It's actually for sale. With a new member of Northrop & Johnson, we really wanted to have a presence in Turkey. And we now have on board the company, Dennis Kamaz. He's probably the person who knows more about yachting in Turkey than anybody I've ever met. He represents the owner of this yacht. And if you want more details, his contact details are on screen now.